Three of these set seven brings a lot of change, so I'll go through them and hopefully by the end of this video you should be familiar with the new set. I've split the video into 13 parts marked by chapters which are also short individually, so if you prefer that format you can find the playlist in the description. Anyway, here we go. Dragons are the new set mechanic in set 7, each providing plus 3 to the mark trait but they take 2 team slots. Passively, Deja's attacks deal bonus magic damage and shred a mark. The ult is a wind blast that deals magic damage to the largest group of enemies. Idis reduces incoming damage for 2 seconds, heals herself and shields allies for 5 seconds. The shield gives 40% attack speed whilst it holds. Shoyu gains damage reduction, immunity to CC and the next 3 attacks have different effects. Bai Fen charges towards the farthest enemy within 2 hexes, dealing physical damage and knocking up enemies. Sai Fen then bites an enemy, ignoring some of their armour. Ao Shin fires 20 lightning strikes, each dealing magic damage and draining 20 mana. Aesol summons a black hole under a random enemy, exploding after 2 seconds and dealing magic damage to enemies and reducing their AD. Each cast increases the area and damage. Shivana transforms into a dragon, stuns the largest group of enemies and she brews fire, dealing a percent of the enemy's max HP as magic damage. The Treasure Dragon is another new mechanic that's been introduced in Set 7 that fixed a long-standing issue after Stage 4 where your board could still be ambiguous because of the incomplete items. The Treasure Dragon allows you to have a lot more control over what you get and the direction of your board. It's still partially random but you can still roll for better options that are more suitable for your board. Because of this, spats have even more value because you can just roll for the component to complete the spat into what you want but you can also roll spatulas. Just to make sure you have enough gold as you can't sell units until you take from the dragon. This means that you and your opponent's boards should be finalized by the end of stage 4 and the main power spikes after this point will be from leveling or starring up units be it 2 stars or 3 stars. There's also 8 very rare rolls that you should be aware of. I've highlighted them here but each have only a 0.2% chance of appearing. This spreadsheet is from more dog Twitter and I've linked it in the comments below. I'll briefly cover the new origins in set 7. Astral gives AP and every 5th shop drops loot and the shop has a high chance of rolling Astral units. Jade summons statues and allies adjacent to them get an attack speed and HP regen. Mirage changes from game to game, Raging units gain rage instead of mana and raging when they cast, gaining attack speed and omnivamp. Tumor scale grants you random exclusive items. Tempest summons lightning after 8 seconds, dealing a percent of the unit's max HP as true damage and Tempest units then gain attack speed. Whispers damage shrinks units, reducing their armor and MR by 40% for 6 seconds and they gain stacking AD and AP when they damage a shrunken enemy. When rebel units deal ability damage, they launch a firecracker dealing bonus magic damage. Gilskorn units gain 25% damage reduction from enemy units with 2.2k or more HP and they deal bonus magic damage but you can't field a dragon. Trainer summons a Nomzi which they give AP and HP to by feeding him snacks. Nomzi tears up every 25 snacks. Each guild unit provides a unique buff to your board. I'll go over these new classes. At 50% HP, Guardians shield themselves and their closest ally for a percent of their maximum HP. Assassin abilities can crit and they gain crit chance and crit damage. Cavaliers gain armor and MR and they charge towards their target. At the start of combat and after each charge, they gain double the bonus. Bruces give the team bonus max HP, they gain double that bonus. Swift shots gain attack speed for each hex between themselves and their target. You can choose a Dragonmancer hero and they gain loads of HP and AP which increases per star level of the Dragonmancers. Shapeshifters transform increasing their max HP. Each combat legend units consume an adjacent ally, taking all their HP, armor, MR and a percent of their AP. Warrior attacks have a 33% chance to increase the damage of their next attack. Cannoneer fires a cannon shot every 5th attack dealing bonus physical damage around the target. Mages cast twice and have scaled AP. Evokers gain mana whenever anyone casts. And Mystic gives your team MR. Mirage varies from game to game, so I'll briefly go over each of their variations. Dawnbringer heals Mirage units when they drop below 50% HP. Great for tanks but lacks any damage, so this is risky without something like Ascension. Duelist grants movement speed and altars grant stacking attack speed up to 10 stacks, which is especially good for the carries. When attacking or being attacked, Electric gives Mirage units a chance to deal a percent of their max HP as magic damage around them to adjacent enemies. This one is the trickiest because it's the only one where you shouldn't really play Deja. Executioner makes Mirage units, abilities and autos always crit enemies below a certain HP. They also gain bonus crit damage, which is again amazing for carries. Pirates gives you chest loot after each combat, which is great for econ, but it doesn't benefit any Mirage unit. The full list of what you can get is in the comments. Spellsword gives AP per auto, which is amazing for Deja and Yone because it can significantly increase their damage. 
And Warlord gives HP and AP increasing by 10% per win up to 5 stacks, which is amazing for your entire board. The Shimmer Scale trait introduces 9 unique items. Some give gold and some scale of how much gold you have, but are capped at 80%. When the holder of Determined Investor dies 7 times, you get 15 gold, a champion duplicator, and diamond hands. Diamond hands gives invulnerability at 66 and 33% HP for 2 seconds, each time giving 1 gold. Mogul's Mail gives armor, MR, and HP when taking damage up to 30 stacks, then giving 2 gold. The 15 seconds Needlessly Big Gen gives units 1% more damage per gold you have, and for every 3 units alive, you get 1 gold. Draven's Axe gives 1 AD per gold you have, the item stacks every attack up to 100, then giving 8 gold and an item component, which can also be a spat. Gamma's Blade gives 1% attack speed per gold you have, each attack has a 6% chance of dropping 1 gold. Old Man's Staff grants 1 AP per gold you have, and the Holder's Kills have a 50% chance of dropping 2 gold. And with Crown of Champions, the Holder deals 9001 times the amount of gold you have in true damage every 4 seconds. I'll go through the main item changes. BT now gives 25% Omnivamp, but the shielding is 5% less. Extech gives 25% Omnivamp. Hodge gives 5 more AP, AD, and Omnivamp, but the bonus is now doubled. Deathblade's AD was nerfed across the board. Winslade gives 5% more damage, but the bonus is 10% less, and the bonus threshold is increased by 400 HP. RFC gives 5% less attack speed. Asper Spear reduces armor to 50%, but now procs and physical damage. Archangel gives 30 AP initially, then 20 AP every 5 seconds of combat. Morello now gives 20 extra AP. Bramble gives 10 less armor. Redemption heals 6% less, missing HP. Stunfire Cape now grants 250 more HP, and duration increased by 2 seconds, but the DOT has been halved. Dragon's Claw grants 80 less MR and the damage was replaced with a 1.2% max HP regen per enemy targeting them, procking every 2 seconds. These bonuses are increased by 20% for dragons. Spats are extremely valuable in set 7. Some traits are difficult to chase vertically and need spats to hit that 5 and tier. Spats also give you a lot of flexibility in your comp so you can drop weaker units for a stronger unit with a spat. For Shimmer Scale Mage and Dragon Mancer, there are 7 units of each trait, but their final tier is at 9. A great way to use a Dragon Mancer spat is to make a non Dragon Mancer unit your hero, receiving lots of AP and HP. Likewise, a Mage spat can give so much value because of that double cast, so on someone like Aesop who scales as he casts more, you get even more value out of the spat. And for Mirage, Cavalier, Guardian, and Assassin, you only need one spat to be able to hit the final tier. Cavalier spat gives both MR and armor, which is insane tankiness for any unit you put this spat on. Guardian spat is also great on units with loads of HP like Ruses or Shapeshifters. I think Rage Ring is the only bad spat. I can't think of a unit that would benefit from enraging and not lose a lot when they are mana locked. But I could be wrong. If you guys know a unit that pops off a Rage Ring spat, let me know in the comments. Augments are back in set 7, but they've changed in big ways. The first big change is that the timings are completely different. The first augment is at 2-1 instead of 1-4, second augment is at 3-2 instead of 3-3, and the last is at 4-2 instead of 4-6. You can also reroll your augment choices once a game. Gold augments are now the most common augment you'll see, so augments are more reliable to spike board strength, and the augments balance has been changed. Prismatic augments power has been dialed back significantly. For example, instead of getting two emblems in a crown augment, you now get an emblem, an item, and a unit. And some existing augments have changed tiers. Binary airdrop is now prismatic, and blue bat 2 is now gold. Tome, phony, and calculated loss were silver, but now are gold augments. And a whole bunch of augments like backfoot, battle mage, and phalanx were removed. So now, the augment pool is a lot less diluted, feels a lot more unique, and the variance is a lot less wild. But augments are still powerful and impactful. Excluding dragons, there's 5 legendary units, 2 are damage carries and 3 are utility. Soraka passively gains 15 bonus mana per attack if any ally is below 50% HP, and her cast summons a shower of stars that heals allies. And once per combat, Soraka heals the tactician upon her first cast. Bard stuns the largest group of enemies and increases the damage they take. Bard and allies have a chance of dropping a dude, each of which add 1% to your shop odds for blue, purple, or gold tier units. Yasuo shields himself, dashes through his target, and slashes nearby enemies for physical damage. Every third cast deals 2.5 times damage, hits a larger area, and knocks enemies up. Pike slashes the lowest HP enemy, dealing magic damage to his target and other enemies nearby, reducing their healing by 50% for 8 seconds. Enemies below a HP threshold are executed. Zoe changes her spell from one to another after every cast or at the beginning of each round. I'll show images of each of the variations.
I can't go over every unit, so what I'll do instead is go over units that share more than one trait with each other. Pet and Swain are both Ragewing Dragonmancers, Swain and Siobhan are Ragewing Shapeshifters, Karma and Ash are Jade Dragonmancers, and Na and Nico are Jade Shapeshifters. Ragewing and Jade have the most overlap of all the origins. There's Dragonmancer and Shapeshifter, but there's also Swift Shot with Ash and Zaya. You could have this Jade board easily turn into a very strong Ragewing board by just swapping out your dragon. Astro has two bruisers with Skarna and Ilawi, and two mages with Vlad and Nami, so you could use Astro to 3 star these units if you're playing a bruiser or a mage board. Silas is a good addition here because he's both a mage and a bruiser. Silas and Siphon are Whispers Bruiser, Shen and Olaf are Bruiser Warrior. So Vertical Bruiser gives you 4 Whispers and 2 Warrior with a lot of tankiness so it's very straightforward, strong and flexible. Yon and Yasuo are Mirage Warrior which can be a damage increase of both depending on the Mirage variation. Lastly, Jinx and Corky are both Revel Cannoneers. I think there's 6 units in particular that you can always play. Glaoui steals armor and MR from enemy units with her cast, so she becomes even tankier and reduces their damage mitigation. Shen makes an area of immunity to physical damage which hard counters AD comps. This buys time and protects any nearby allies. Lulu boosts the attack speed of nearby allies or CCs any nearby enemies. This means you can play Lulu to support and protect your carry at the same time. Twitch has AoE armor shred so you don't need last whisper and it gives 10% attack speed to your board. Bard gives everyone more mana per attack, increases damage on enemies he stuns and can give your board MR with Mystic. His traits alone benefit any board greatly but he also increases your shot odds for higher cost units. Yasuo is an extremely flexible late game carry that can fit in any board and perform well. He does well with a variety of items, provides a great amount of CC and can still output a lot of damage. There's two items you can put any carry and get a lot of success from, and it's QSS and Giant Slayer. These items do favour AD carries, but AP carries can still get a lot of use from them. Late game there'll be loads of CC, so granting CC immunity to your carry allows them to continue dishing out damage uninterrupted. Secondly, no other item can scale your carry's damage as much as Giant Slayer, especially as reroll comps and high HP units are very common in this set. Giant Slayer also pairs well with healing items because of the damage bonus. Usually the last item on your carry is a scaling item that capitalizes on the duration of the CC immunity. So on an AD carry this can be Rageblade, or on an AP carry it can be Archangel. QSS also grants 20% bonus attack speed, which kickstarts the Rageblade stacks or can get even more use out of mana generating items like Shoujin. The damage bonus from Giant Slayer increases the scaling even more, so your carries will start dealing even more damage as the battle progresses, but they're still initially dealing a lot. And I think that should cover most of it. If there's anything you think I missed or you think I should include in the future, please let me know because I plan to continue making more guides like this. Next up is how to play each and every Mirage variation, so look forward to that. But anyway, hopefully you found this helpful. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe for more.